maybe just unpack that phase there in the middle as far as when the discovery phase to making the right. decision to, to, to the move and maybe help somebody out there uh, maybe right. suffering some, some similar issues. Well, I actually had to have uh, a car crash, literally. Uh, sure. How do you help people start to go down that rabbit trail of questioning their life up to that point? And they're like, oh my gosh, this isn't even close to what I thought it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, look, my, the first thing that I say to them is... All right, what? everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, super excited about the conversation we are getting ready to have right now with Colin Kingsmill. Colin is actually coming to us from Nova Scotia, Canada, correct? Is that correct, Colin? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. The best part about the podcast, folks, for me. So if you're out there thinking that you are even considering doing a podcast, I <laughs> highly recommend it. Just the people that you get to meet, literally from all over the world. I've had conversations with the people living in Japan. Um, obviously, Canada is obviously local here to the United States. But at the same time, it's just different people from different walks of life, which is to me is what makes it so much fun and so rewarding. So I don't even know why I went yeah. down that tangent here at the beginning, but Hey, I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're no, considering good. it, I, I highly it's recommend good, it's, it. It's a good tangent to go down. I think it's yeah, great. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be a fun conversation with Colin. Colin is a private coach for entrepreneurs and CEO founders looking to make a meaningful shift in their lives. He describes his life's journey in three chapters. Chapter hmm. one, he was really focused in, in 10 years of Swiss banking. Chapter two, he moved into 20 years of international destination real estate. And we might be able to get into a little bit more detail what that exactly means. Uh, just curious for sure. And then chapter sure. three is where he's moved into his private coaching and mentoring, where he focuses on guiding exceptional individuals through radical change without fear. And we're going to talk a lot about that today as well. He's the founder and creator of the Enough Already movement, where he's on a mission to help people, number one, rediscover their humanity. Number two, live in integrity. Number three, be fearless. And number four, become free from suffering that's holding them down. So when I was reading through uh, Colin's information before I reached out to him to join us here in the podcast, just those few things that I've mentioned here so far were very intriguing to me, uh, wanting to learn more. Uh, from his uh, from his walks of life, right? Where he's at mm. through his discovery, through his phases of his chapters uh, and how it can relate with the discussion that we're going to have here on the podcast. So it's going to be a super valuable conversation and I'm just really looking forward to it. So Colin, man, welcome to the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, it, like you said, in as you're speaking about the the you know the idea of podcasting, I think it's brilliant that we live in a world today where you know, you can start a podcast and speak to people around the world, but more importantly, uh, reach an audience that you might have never known you had. And, uh, and uh, you know, power power to the independence, right? I love it. It's great. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, there's actually, uh, we have uh, different metrics and things for the podcast. And I, yeah, you're literally reaching people all over the world. I was looking yeah. at it just the other day. Uh, I don't have an exact number as far as how many countries it's reached, but it's definitely outside of my little jurisdiction over my little borders here in the state of Indiana, here in the United right. States, which is super fascinating, right? Which is super cool. It's always so much fun. Yeah. You become borderless. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of borderless, let's get, mm. dive into your story. I would love, I sure. read through a lot of the, the bullet points there about you. Just go a little bit deeper. Tell us a little bit more about you and share your story. I would love to get to know you even a little bit better. Sure. I mean, I guess chapter one would probably be a good place to start, right? Because I'm, I'm living kind of the antithesis of all of that today. And, um, I think a lot of people are still in that in that chapter one. Uh, what do I mean by that? It, I, I mean, when I uh, graduated from university, I, I held this belief that you were, uh, or I was anyway, you know, supposed to tick a series of boxes, right? Almost like a shopping list of um, activities and things to to do and acquire and, and and ways of being that would make you happy right that would make you fulfilled that would make you quote unquote successful that would make you look good in the eyes of others and be accepted and and be considered worthy and you know Randy I checked every single one of those boxes right um, I got out of university I got a job at the largest bank in Switzerland I was wearing a suit and tie every day I uh, was going to the right places, you know, at Easter and Christmas. And, um, 
kind of accumulating all of those things, whether it be, you know, cars or friends or um, experiences that were supposed to make you feel whole, right? And I woke up one day, you know, 20 years ago, maybe it's a bit more now, and none of it was making me happy. None of it was fulfilling. I felt like uh, just absolutely empty. And um, I, I realized I, it, it was literally one day. It was like April 6th. And it was like, this is all wrong. It's not working. This is not the path to happiness, fulfillment, sense of self-worth. None of it. Because it was all external, right? And uh, that day, I literally... I literally decided uh, to, in the, in the meantime, I had also uh, started my own company with some partners. So we were in the financial services business. I think we grew to sort of 20 or 25 employees. So, you know, I, I was a classic workaholic, right? And um, from, from sort of external vantage points, it probably looked pretty enticing and interesting, right? I mean, I've I don't want to go down the list of things I've done and been and where I've, the things I've seen that, that, that seems reductive here, but um, everything you kind of dream about as a kid or, or might be looking at it as, or aspiring today from, you know, meeting movie stars and, and being on their homes in their homes in Lake Como to flying in private planes and things like that, all of it um, meant nothing at the, at, at that point. So I decided to, um, I, I decided that it was time to recalibrate. So I, get, I literally gave everything away. Hmm. Um, that weekend, I decided that was it. This didn't make sense. I had been focused on all the wrong things. It was all external. Um, everything that I had been told would make me whole again or whole for the first time. Um, well, not the first time, I suppose, but but whole as an adult, Uh didn't didn't make sense anymore. So I decided to move back to Canada and to pursue a career that was more tangible, where there was sort of more evidence of what I was doing as opposed to shuffling paper with, with numbers on it. And uh, that's when I got into international real estate development. And that's specifically in the destination space, which, which is kind of interesting, right? Because you or we would design and plan and master plan and build and then operate uh, mountain resorts or beach resorts or golf resorts, any of the the sort of leisure spaces that you that 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 might come to mind. And um, so Whistler Mountain would have been one of them, or Aspen Snowmass is another. Uh, uh, Stratton in Vermont, Sandestin in Florida, you know, all all kind of iconic locations that you know. And those places are always carefully in 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 meticulously designed they look like they've kind of grown organically right but they're 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 very much master planned uh you know and and restaurants are placed where the sun will go down so the evening crowd will arrive after they've been you know on the golf course or at the beach or things like that so that was that was i loved that actually because there was that tangibility to it and that sense of creation and in that in that second chapter i also uh, decided to do something which I had done nothing of in the first chapter, and that was begin to learn what uh, self-improvement meant, begin to learn what self-discovery meant, begin to delve into uh, readings and, and, and books and teachings that I had never looked at before, right? It was, um, for me, it was all about, chapter one was all about superficiality and externality. And chapter two was, okay, well, there's something here to look at and, and, um, so I started to dive into that and I, and I got into everybody, you know, uh, all the icons of today were just starting out, whether it was Joe Dispenza or Eckhart Tolle, or, um, and, and there's a, there's a plethora of others, but, uh, I really started to, to, to kind of get into self-development and, and, and self-improvement and, and went to those bookstores and just kind of picked up everything that was at that middle table, right? Whether it was Barnes and Noble or there was all that stuff in the middle table that you wanted to grab, right? The seven habits of whatever they were, success, um, um, all that stuff. And I consider that phase a little bit of, uh, I, I call it shelf development, right? Because like your bookshelves in the back, right? You can, you can read the book, but if you don't internalize it, 
it remains kind of on the shelf, right? Um, and I did a lot of that. I, 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 I absorbed all of it, but I really didn't, um, I really didn't embody any of it. Uh, not any of it. I, I really didn't embody it truly and wholly. And, um, after kind of 20 years of, of, of that career, which interestingly enough, um, got me to the same places I had been before, but they were a, almost a byproduct or a consequence of doing something I really loved. So, you know, again, Christmas in San Moritz and Easter in Saint Tropez and super yachts and boats and, 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 but it wasn't my destination. Like I didn't, I wasn't trying to get there. You know, um, I didn't have those, the, I, I experienced them. I didn't have the, the jets and the boats, but everybody around me did. I think I had the smallest boat in the marina, actually. So at one point, but uh, but you know what I mean? It was it, it was interesting because uh, the, 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 the success kind of um, came as a consequence of doing something passionately and, and doing something with uh, with kind of a different brand purpose, I guess, if, if you want. And uh now chapter three is is really whether it's you know team and team leadership and and team coaching with whole human coaching or my one on one stuff with Colin Kingswell coaching um, is is all about helping people stay less time in their chapter one and chapter two and kind of more time in what potentially chapter three can be. Right. And that's why if you can kind of untether yourself from those stories and narratives that are holding you down, you can really live abundantly and freely. The, the triad of from team, team coaching and, and leadership development and one on one coaching is is that the, the last piece is really this idea of enough already. Right. And for me, enough already is is we are living in a we are living in a time where so so many people are sick and if they're not sick they're tired and they're burnt out or stressed out maybe all of the above and i'm kind of saying you know what we can do things better we we can do things much much better than this and what if we focused on our collective humanity what if we focused on living in integrity and i don't mean not lying i mean really living who you truly are right if you can combine that with becoming less afraid of, of, and, and look, I, I think you have to have almost like a personal protection system around you, almost a kryptonite to, to get there. But, you know, humanity, integrity, and fearlessness should allow you, I hope, to become free and free from psychological suffering, or even just the tethers that are holding you down, the stories that stop you and delay you and make you make you not make the move. Um, once you, you know, once you kind of get into that space, I think really the possibilities are unlimited, unlimited. And that's where I'm trying to kind of work with and coach people. And uh, let's see where this movement goes. But but, you know, and that, because enough already, I think, also means, you know, even down to that, that the first element of humanity. What if we, you know, what if we, what if businesses treated people with humanity? You know, I think our food supply might be different. I think, I think healthcare might be different. I think conflict might, might taint, might be different. I think we might shed light on those areas around the world that, that, don't get the the attention that let's say the headline news gives um, gives certain things. So, yeah, I hope that's a. Uh, I hope I didn't ramble on for too long, but that's kind of chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, and uh, that's really it. Love it, love it. So let's <laughs> let's unpack chapter one a little bit more, mm, if you sure. don't mind, just sure, because I think that sometimes this this was my experience as well. Meaning you're just. Mm. You're living life, in my opinion, and I'm kind of ad-libbing here. So if, if I'm not kind of touching on how you uh, mean it, please correct me. Sure. But at the same time, it's like you're just like living on autopilot, right? You're doing what you're – we're like you said, you, you mentioned checking off all the boxes, right? You're just doing what you were supposed to do. You're doing what either parent or your – you know, whatever – your influences, let's just put it that way, maybe was mm -hmm. telling you mm -hmm. what you should do versus what you are called to do or what you feel like you want to do. 
Right. Let's maybe just unpack that a little bit more. If someone's listening to us today and they're discovering through some mm-hmm. self-discovery that maybe they're in a place where they don't necessarily want to be anymore, but they're not even sure where to begin. You made it sound like through your story there that it was almost like a a sudden decision, but I would assume that it wasn't like an instant thing where you made the decision, okay, I've got to get out of this and move on to something else. Maybe just unpack that phase there in the middle as far as when the discovery phase to making the right. decision to, to to the move and maybe help somebody out there uh, maybe right. s- suffering some, some similar issues. Well, I actually had to have uh, a car crash, literally, to kind of wake up. Uh, I was speeding my Range Rover up the Swiss Alps, you know, at night one at, while it was snowing. And I spun out of control. I mean, it was such a metaphor for my life, right? I spun out of control and I landed uh, on the ditch side of the road as opposed to the lake side of the road. And I think I I know that if I had landed in the lake side, I probably would not be here speaking with you today. Hmm. And it was a wake up call because it was this intersection of, well, reckless driving and spinning out of control, which was a metaphor for my life. But also my sort of stress levels had had been going up and up and up. And I was probably becoming more and more in, uh, of an intolerable kind of friend. And people were saying to me, you know, you better watch out. Like you're too stressed out. You're going to have a heart attack. You're 30 years old. This is, it doesn't make any sense. And it was really a, a it was really a wake up call. So I didn't um, I didn't have a slow progression into, oh, I need to make a change. It was spin out of control, hit the side of the mountain, luckily on the right side of it. And uh, I just said this, this, this was a um, signal from, uh, I don't know, the universe or God or whoever you, you might believe in, but it was a signal from above that I needed to stop. And uh, a couple of other things happened right at the same time. And I was like, all right, we're done. So it was literally over a weekend that it, that it happened. Now, I, I think you're absolutely right about this, this idea of being on autopilot, this idea of lacking awareness, right? So if anybody's listening, I would, the, what I would, what I would, what I would suggest they do is begin to ask questions of themselves. You know, um, is this right? Is this clear? Is this what it's for? Is this why I'm like, start to question everything because I know I didn't, right? I, I just, I, I finished my triple major. I decided then, you know, to go into banking. Like I said, then it was like, well, you need to get an MBA of course, because that was all the rage. Right. So I, I, I went and did, did an MBA at night school and got that, got that credential. And I, I honestly look back and I think I was sleepwalking, you know, mm. through the whole thing. It was literally, here's the list, go and do it. And, um, so my advice would be to, to be, if, if you, if anybody in your audience is feeling like a slight tinge that this isn't probably what I was meant to do or what this, this is just feeling right. And, and, you know, there's a great book by Gabor Mate called when the body says no, right. And you listen to your body, right. Listen to the indicators that it's giving you, listen to your friends, right. They're probably seeing the truth before you are and start to question everything because, and, and, you know, especially today, my gosh, back then we didn't have social media at the time, right. Or, or, we had the beginnings of the internet. Now I'm, I'm, I'm aging myself, but, but <laughs> the problem with today is even, I think even more challenging probably for your audience because we are distracted, right? We are distracted by all, all, you know, social media coming at us from every angle and the, the, the 24 hour news cycle that, that we didn't have, that we didn't have back then. So it's even more critical today to step back and ask yourself, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? You know, I, and I, and I, I do this a lot when I'm speaking to, to people around coaching is the, the, the why, the why in your purpose or the why in your drive, right? You want to make sure that the why is not a compensation for something that might be missing, right? Some kind of core wound of unworthiness or 
some kind of early childhood trauma or, or something that you might be compensating for today that you don't even realize is a coping mechanism, uh, you know, from the past. So yeah, switch off autopilot, <laughs> like you said, get out, get out as soon as possible and start really driving. Not like me, but uh, yeah, not, not wrecking in, into the uh, side of a mountain, but at the same time, yeah, getting in the driver's exactly. seat, right? Driver's yes. seat of your life versus exactly. like you said, or, you know, the autopilot part, as far as uh, the awareness, yeah. I challenge my kids. I challenge them all the time to question everything. I didn't question things a lot growing up either. Uh, parents, uh, school, whatever, right. You just, I took it in as what they said was truth. And I lived that way for the longest time until, like you said, I had a, a moment in my life where my career just, I got slapped upside the head and I just started to realize that, wow, what I'm being told isn't actually accurate <laughs> yeah. to the point where it made me start to question everything. And I tell my kids even to question me because even sometimes my own beliefs, even still to this day are just still have some old past beliefs that I'm still working on. Sure. Even as we continue on and I'm trying to challenge them even as we, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's the point I wanted to try to make though, is it's difficult work. And I think sometimes that mm. if, if you're not willing to go down the path of the self-discovery of mm -hmm. the awareness, I mean, it starts bringing up some past feelings, past emotions that may or may not be enjoyable. I don't know how else to put it other than that. Um, sure. How do you help people when, as far as that, when they're starting to go down that rabbit trail of, of questioning their life up to that point, and they're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, this isn't even close to what I thought it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But then it starts to conjure up all kinds of thoughts and emotions and feelings and that type of thing. You know, what, what are your thoughts sure. on that? Um, look, uh, th th hmm, there's a couple of parts to it. I mean, my, my first, my, the first thing that I say to them is be kind to yourself right? Be gentle with yourself. We live in a very complex world, I think, in a, in a complex society, at least here in the West, right? And so, th so that's step one, right? Don't beat yourself up because so many of us do. And then uh, step two is let's, let's, um, let's dissect the stories that you are telling yourself, right? Because so often we can get really worked up and whipped up in a, 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 a whole sequence of narratives and storytelling that, that, that goes on starting, you know, first thing in the morning when you wake up. So I try and, 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 and help people deconstruct what those stories are. What are you saying to yourself? You know, what is the, where does, what is the belief system? I'm less worried about where it came from, right? Sometimes it's like, all right, let's go back and forgive that 10 year old, right? Because that 10 year old was only coping right at that time and that and, and you've brought that coping mechanism forward to today that's okay forgive the 10 year old but we don't have to believe in that story anymore and we can break it down into its into its sort of separate elements and then it's like all right let's let's draw the so a line in the sand and rebuild the stories that you want to tell yourself for tomorrow so so that's part two the, the third part is you know, you can look at this from different angles, but it's like, you can also not do that and medicate, right? With either pharmaceuticals or something worse that is going to dampen those stories, right? So you live in the present, but you live oppressed by medication or other addictive substances, right? Now, what is more, what is going to be more painful? And I asked the question, right? Is if you dampen the the old stories, right, because they hurt with with medication or or other substances, what is going to be more more painful in the future, right? You getting sick of that disease, right? And I don't say I don't mean disease. I mean disease, which I think is the disconnect between who you really are and what you are um, oppressing with that kind of with medication or alcohol or other stuff, right? So. It's, it's a question of, it's a question of, you know, do you want to get sick later and potentially much sicker, or do you want to go through that painful unraveling of the stories now and rebuilding the new ones? So it's, you know, you decide, right? Um, and I often say to people, 
you know, how much energy, like if you equate yourself or you use the metaphor of a car, right? How much fuel are you consuming by dampening down those feelings and those stories that might be hurting you, right? How much is it costing you today? How much is it costing you, going to cost you tomorrow? So for me, the thought process of it all and the sort of therapeutic work that you can do elsewhere, and it's like, how much does it cost you? How much is it costing today in energy, in fuel? How much might it cost you tomorrow? And do you want to continue that, right? And most often people will say, no, let's, let's, let's deconstruct the stories. Let's reconstruct new ones. It doesn't take a long time. It can happen pretty quickly. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question or not. <laughs> no, you did. And so then the best part about going through that process is that mm -hmm. the, what you get to on the other side is you might not even be able to recognize it or realize it when you're in the moment, when you're through that discovery mm -hmm. phase of, of questioning, uh, realizing that there isn't anything wrong with you or, or anything else for that matter. No. It's just a matter of just becoming aware that there's a different way of being, uh, becoming who true to yourself, true to your family, uh, discovering why you're here, what you're meant to do, what you're meant to be. Uh, as you mentioned with your uh, totally. chapter one, as far as thinking that it's all about the stuff, right? It's all about the, yeah. the monetary, the the things, but then realizing that at the end of the day, without the personal self-discovery, none of it really matters. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's when you discover that, that's been my experience. When I've discovered that for myself, my whole life changed. So the mm -hmm. work that I did for that, and it's a, it's a, a never ending. I don't think I'll ever get to a destination. I don't think I'll ever get to that, that final destination, or at least where I want to be. But at the same time on that journey, it's been, it's been fun to see life in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's, it's exciting. I'm sure it is for you to see people go through that, that transformation, right. From, from where they were to, uh, to this dream life that they don't even realize maybe it's even possible. Oh, it's great. I, I mean, that, that, that's really what fuels me, right? When you have those aha moments with people who recognize at the, in that moment that they've been telling themselves a whole compilation of stories, you know, it's like a Spotify playlist, right? And, and I'm like, okay, but we can have a different playlist and we can have a different playlist starting tomorrow. So I, I, I'm, I really kind of have this sort of catch and release theory, right? Like, this doesn't have to be long. You don't have to be a client for five years. Like, let's get, and probably to my detriment, but but it's like, let's get to it, right? And and you can get there really, really quickly. And But, but I, I just want to emphasize, especially to your audience, that, that all of the work that I do and probably that you do comes from this place of, or this belief that you are not broken. We are not fixing something, Right. All I'm doing is, and myself and my colleagues that I work with, is perhaps we are shining light into a corner of your story that you might not have seen before. That's it. And perhaps we're helping you deconstruct or break down old habits or old stories that, that, that you thought were true. So it's really, you know, that's not true. Let's shed some light over there and, and repackage things. But um Never do we do I uh, do I look at things as if you're broken? Not at all. It's so important because we live again in this kind of complex society, and I think coaching and leadership development also needs to change because it was so based on sort of success and performance and 10x and get here and and you know here's your whole you know leadership path and it and it's kind of based on old, really old paradigms. Um, so we're kind of shaking things up also the way we do leadership development and teamwork and facilitation. It's, it's, it's got to reflect, uh, the world today. So love that. I just feel like everything's changing and it's changing it so fast from, from humanity to our consciousness, to mm -hmm. technology, to everything is just changing so quickly. And I, yep. I think that sometimes that might create a little bit of anxiety if you're not once again, maybe aware or in the driver's seat, you're just mm -hmm. kind of, once again, just kind of being bounced around through life. But at the same time, if, if you are in the driver's seat and you are paying attention and working on yourself and in your community and your, your leadership or in your family mm -hmm. and those types of things, life can actually start to be enjoyable. Meaning you you feel like you're accomplishing things uh, versus once again, just being bounced around from one thing to another. 
just well, out of control. You're totally right. And I think an, maybe another good point for your audience would be when we speak about the driver's seat, right? And we speak about, you know, go, going down this path, it's also really good to have a, a 360 degree perspective or a bird's eye perspective on, what, on what's going on, right? So a lot of what I do is also um, in the sense making space, right? So, you know, it might look like everything is crashing and burning today, but but if you kind of pull back and look at megatrends and you look at history and you look at the arc of what might be um, the, the American empire, let's say, you know, uh, things towards the end of empire are always a little bit difficult, are always challenging. So if you can also kind of embrace things in a sort of a geopolitical megatrend historical perspective, you know, oh, well, this has happened before and, and, and this is a cycle. Uh, it's all happened before. Um, things come around and there's after the, after things break or crash or, or burn, there's, there's a, a there is always a Renaissance, right? So I, I think that's also as you're driving, right. As you're on your roadmap is to kind of pull up and look kind of from above once in a while as well, because what you said before, I think is important. Things are changing and they're changing rapidly, but I think, you know, people like you or myself um, communicating power in sort of unity and um, and uh, and conversation, right? Look for ways to serve, to help folks yes, as much as you possibly exactly, can. Exactly, exactly. As much as exactly. possibly can. So let's pivot a little bit into sure. your, I, I would call them pillars, right? You've got the different mm -hmm. pillars of the work that you do. Sure. You talk about humanity, you talk mm -hmm. about integrity, right? You talk about fearlessness, but then mm -hmm. that leads to freedom. Which yes. obviously I think that's the, the pinnacle destination we're all trying to get to, whether it's financial freedom, personal yep. freedom, just liberty of, of being able to make choices for ourselves. And yes. that's kind of what we're talking about with the getting in the driver's seat of your life and that type of thing. But I'd love for you to take each one of those pillars, if you don't mind, and just break sure. them down a little bit. Give us a little bit more context as far as what they are, what they mean. Uh, maybe there again, the audience can take those and internalize them for themselves and just sure. start to apply. You mentioned at the very beginning in the self-discovery phase or in your self-development, right? You can get information, but then if you put it on the shelf, they don't use it. Yeah. Right. Maybe we can give them some information that, you know, actionable right. steps and things that they can do today uh, or in sure. the near future that uh, to really move the needle in their life. Sure. So shelf, shelf, self development as opposed to self, you know, uh, self as opposed to shelf, right? Shelf. Yeah. Um, I like that you said uh, that. I never even thought of it that way, but you're right. It's, yeah, you can internalize as much information as you want, but if you're not putting it into action in your life, it's really not doing you much good. Exactly. Exactly. So the, the idea is really to move away from, and no offense to your bookshelves behind you, I've got them as well, <laughs> full, of, full of stuff, but, but, but you want to really internalize what, they're, what the messages are saying. So back to my four pillars. The first one about humanity, and, and, it, and it's, it's rem, I, I like to say I'm on a mission to help people rem, to remind them to remember their humanity. And what does that mean, right? Uh, there's, Lots of connotations around it in terms of serving and how you treat people and 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 the community and et cetera et cetera. But the pivotal thing to remember or to to try and embody is remember that we are one lineage, one humanity on a little rock traveling at sixteen hundred kilometers an hour on its axis, right? Spinning around on its axis, flying through a galaxy that we really know nothing about. So if you can keep that in mind every day, right? So, so I say, look up, don't look down, right? And that has all sorts of connotations, like look up and kind of um, contextualize where you are and what's going on, right? You're on this little rock flying through the flying, flying through the galaxy. Looking down is getting involved in the nitty gritty of the day. You know, you're on social media, you're on your laptop, you're on your computer, and you're kind of in the in the thick of things. So, remembering your humanity is is really, you know. Stop looking down, look up, and put everything into context. Okay, right. So that's step one. If you if you can have that sort of sort of lightness to you, right? You begin to breathe. You begin to let get less stressed. You stress about uh, you stress less about you know an argument with your neighbor or an argument with a coworker, and you begin to look at things differently. So that's one. It's kind of change your perspective. Okay, get out of the weeds and get into the sky, sort of. The second pillar, the one of integrity, is so fundamental because we, many of us, many people, live for others, 
right? Mm. So you live for your spouse, you live for your parent, you live for your child, you live for, and my God, give service to all of those people around you. But ask yourself, how much energy am I spending on not being who I really am? Okay. And how could that energy be used for the betterment of myself and humanity? That's really it, right? Because a lot of people, and especially men, live with a mask on, right? Um, and portray a certain image, right? So you put women do it as well, obviously, but you portray a certain image to your friends, to your family, to your community, to your workforce, to your colleagues at work, etc. Well, what if you spent less energy and less time on the mask and more on who you really are? And that might mean that you change jobs or change countries or change many things in your life. But again, it's, it's the expenditure of energy and what could you do with that energy? And I think if you take away the mask and you live in integrity, you can use that resource for the betterment of yourself and the betterment of mankind. Right. And um, so I don't mean by, by, by saying living in integrity, I don't mean, well, you know, stop telling white lies. No, it's, it's who are you? Okay. And is it not time to step forward and be that person, that person of service? Right. And, uh, and, you know, things might change. You might have to find a new tribe, right? And that's okay because that new tribe will allow you to live more freely and be who you really are. And it's connected to this idea of freedom. Move towards your potential, right? And that's why I have fear in the way, right? So if you can begin to discover who you really are and be who you really are without the masks and without the expenditure, right? and that's why we get depressed, right? And, and I've heard, I've heard depression be called deep rest, right? You have, you have to, you have to have deep rest when you are not being your true self, right? Because that is so expensive to run and operate and to be, and to put on that show that a lot of people get depressed because it really is just deep rest going back and going, oh, okay. You know, oh, there, I'm done, done for the day. You know, done putting on the mask. So, um, the the this third pillar of of fearlessness is, you know, ask yourself, what if I was fearless? What would I do today if I had no fears? Right. And again, often fear is just a bunch of storytelling that you've got in your head, right? So let's break it down. What are you afraid of? And you know, keep keep asking yourself. Okay, so what? What am I afraid? Of? Okay, what 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 would happen? Just keep digging back and back and back, and if you keep digging digging back, you realize that well, I'll be just fine, you know. But again, as you know, these stories get in our heads and they lock us down. So, um, those are really the three the three pillars to get to freedom. And gosh, if you're free, what are the possibilities there? And that's where I think you can kind of become unlimited or, or, you know, really live in your true potential, you know, remember who you are. Don't get stuck in the weeds, live who you really are, right? Untether yourself from fear that's holding you back and holding you down. And what are the, what are the, what could you do, right? If you were in that fourth space and then it's kind of connected to, you know, energy and abundance and, and, and call it wealth or prosperity or success, you know, that's where it comes in that space of, you know, untethered possibilities that are no longer, you know, that, that sort of success or abundance or wealth or financial freedom is no longer the destination, but simply the byproduct of living with those in those four pillars if that makes sense it does and it sounds like that was similar to what you were experiencing as you were moving through your real estate second chapter as far mm -hmm. as you were having the rewards of the work but it was more enjoyable maybe it wasn't your complete fulfillment but at the same time you were experiencing oh. similar 
situations, but you were, you were probably, it sounds like a little bit more in, into integrity with yourself, with where you were heading sure. and trying to become. Yeah, for sure. Because it wasn't, it wasn't the objective, right? Being on a super yacht or being in a private plane or being in, you know, fabulous homes that, 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 that wasn't the objective, but it ended up being the consequence, right? So, you know, weddings in Cannes or the South of France or Formula One, you know, watching it from, you know, live from the terrace. I mean, it, it just happened and it was much more enjoyable because you're like, well, I don't give up whatever about this, but, but here I am and let's have fun. Right. So it's, you know, it, it, when, when you're trying to get it, you're kind of thirsty and hungry for that stuff. Right. When you don't care anymore and you're doing stuff that is fun and you're, you're, you're learning to be who you really are. And it just so happens that you, you know, you, you get surrounded by that stuff. Um, then it's just playtime. The whole thing, your whole life should be playtime. We should all be playing a lot more. <laughs> it's, just, it's not supposed to be this hard, right? It's yes, hundred percent. Yeah, I say to fun. people all as the much time, as possibly can. Doesn't have to be like this. Let's shift. Let's. It doesn't have to be like this. Let's change the story and change the change the story and change the objective. Like the des- Where's the destination? Let's make it somewhere more heart centered as opposed to external, external centered. And if each one of us focused on ourselves versus worrying about so much about what was going on in the exterior, whether it's the political climate or even just your neighborhood or anything like that, right? Focusing on putting your mask on first, working on yourself, doing the self-discovery, getting in the driver's seat, how much, if we all did that collectively, how much life would be so different. We could all, like you said, have some fun. And enjoy each other, enjoy our company, uh, serve, help. Yeah. All of those kinds of fascinating you know, things. Uh, you know, elevate people out of poverty, make make impactful, you know, decisions and choices around the environment. I like there's it has a it has a real ripple effect, I think, um, in every in everything you do and everything we do. Yeah. Yeah, love that. So as far as maybe a few tactical ideas as far as for each one of those pillars, for so for the humanity peace. Are there any things that you do, any practices that you do? You mentioned about as far as instead of looking down to just mm. become unaware of your surroundings and things like that. Are there any things that you do so, personally or that you suggest yeah. to your clients that you're working with to try to help them? Let's say somebody is hearing this kind of a concept or idea for the first mm. time and they're like, yes, I need to do that because I'm so far in the weeds of, of the day-to-day social media, just the yep. stuff. I've got to get out. And where do they start? Look, I think the one, the, 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 certainly the thing that changed for me dramatically was beginning to do meditation, right? Mm. Because um, if you begin, if you can can begin a meditative practice, it changes everything, right? Uh, because you no longer go through the day on autopilot, right? You, you, and if you if you take your practice kind of over time, you you begin to. Uh, you begin to turn off autopilot every five minutes, right? It's this sort of constant check. Am I being mindful? Am I being aware? Is there clarity? So that you know if you get onto social media and start to go down a a rabbit hole on X, that it's like eating a box of candy, right? Or like, you know what you're doing, right? I'm on I'm on X and and this is kind of fun. I'm gonna do it for 15 minutes and then I'm gonna stop. But to me, to me, this idea of of looking up and not looking down into the weeds, you comes through mindfulness and meditation. And there are very good apps out there. Uh, The one that I would suggest looking at is Waking Up by Sam Harris. Mm. Very pragmatic, not spiritual, nothing woo woo. You, 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 You know, you get on there 10 minutes a day and he just guides you through a very simple meditation. Now I can't go a day without it, right? Uh, I've wow. now I do twenty minutes of him, and then twenty minutes on Insight Timer. That's another good one. Insight Timer is a great app. Calm is also a very good app. But um, that's the that's the key to being able to make that decision up or down around humanity, right? And and, and awareness and and getting off of off of autopilot. The other thing to to do is to combine that with physical activity, right? Because once you become mindful and you begin to nourish your body, you, um, you then realize that, that you're more aware of the coping mechanisms you might have, 
right? Whether it's procrastination or whether it's alcohol or whether it's a drug or whatever, right? Sugar, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that, that's really it for, for, for stage one. Um, mindfulness and meditation, physical activity and awareness around co-coping mechanisms. The second one, uh, the, the idea of integrity. I mean, there's, there's Martha Beck is a wonderful coach online. Um, and she wrote a book called the way of integrity, which is iconic. I would start there. Um, but also, you know, be, if you're exploring this area, begin to ask yourself, um, there's also websites like men without masks. There are places to go and resources to get online very, very quickly, uh, even on, you know, places like YouTube to begin to question whether you are living in integrity or, uh, or not. And the same with fear, um, fear, I would start to journal, right? Begin to write down the stories you're telling yourself about fear and negativity and what are you afraid of? What And, and fear shows up in 25 other different versions, right? Whether it's guilt and, you know, shame. It, 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 if, if you look at sort of the wheel of emotions and how fear expands outward, it, it shows up in many, many, many different forms. So um, journaling, I think, is the best, the best approach there. And also... I, I do a lot of in our in our leadership work we call it the leadership toolkit, where you you know fear comes from uncertainty right, and uh, so I I work a, a lot with leaders around well let you know so often fear is not, how do I say this so often there's fear but we haven't cat we haven't um, sp- been very specific about where, what it is and where it's coming from, because you don't know where you're going, right? Oh, I'm afraid of this, or I'm afraid of that. I'm worried about the future. Okay. Well, what does the future look like? Have you designed it? You know, what, what is, what is your personal brand? Where do you want to get to? What are your values and attributes? What is, what do you want people, you know? So we have this thing called the toolkit, which is all about your personal brand, your values and your attributes and your needs and your boundaries, right. And your destination in terms of your career or whatever. So, uh, so I guess the, the one, the one, the one thing to say to your audience, to your audience is if you are afraid of things, have a better design for tomorrow is, is my advice. Okay. Because so often, uh, and I hear this all the time, I'm afraid I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of, um, you know, financial security. Oh, okay. What does that mean? Well, you know, money in the bank. Okay. Well, how much? Oh, I don't know. Right. So, so it's, 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 it's about becoming very, very specific about what your fears are, right? What do they actually mean? Have you quantified them, <laughs> right? So often people are like, oh, no, I hadn't thought about that. Well, you know, is fear, you know, fear of financial insecurity, is that $1,000 or is it 10 million? I mean, it depends, right? So if it's 10 million, okay, well, then, then map it out, you know, from whatever you are today to that, let's come up with a plan. And if you have a plan, then the fear begins to dwindle away, right? But so often we live in fear without an exit plan. So that's my other, my, that would be my nugget for the fear, for the fear pillar. And freedom, I mean, that's just, imagine the possibilities of you being untethered, right? So I think that's it. Love it. So folks, you'll want to rewind that little section right there. That was, uh, that was good stuff from the mindful meditation all the way to the integrity piece. Yeah. Appreciate you sharing that wisdom. That, I'm going to re-listen to that one as well. So those, uh, the resources that you shared as well, some of those, uh, meditation pieces, I'm going to look into those as well. Yeah. I use one personally called brain tap is what it's called. It's an okay. app. It's a guided meditation, mm-hmm. uh, s- probably similar to the ones you're mentioning as well. Mm-hmm. I've, I've mentioned it before on the podcast. If you yeah. heard me say that before, uh, but yes, I, it doesn't have to be as, as a challenging exercise as people I think probably will make it. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of just getting in the routine of doing it and setting yourself in that right, proper mind space to uh, be able to be aware of a different it, reality. It, than I maybe tell you, Randy, it changes everything. And I only really started right. a couple of years ago. It's definitely a chapter three thing. Right. And, uh, and it, it, cause you become less reactive, you become less stressed, less worried, less anxious, 
because you know that 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 thought will flow in and it flows out as quickly as it came in because you're like oh i don't think i i really don't want to believe that today or now if it's serving you go for it you know fill your boots but more often than not it's not so yeah my experience has been that if i if i get myself where i feel like a little anxiety a little anxiousness coming on my wife she calls it a brain game she goes why don't you go do one of those brain games exactly <laughs> like it, which is what that is right i yeah. just plug in my little earbuds uh, lay back, close my eyes and 15, 20 minutes, like you said. And it's, yeah. it's like a, a whole new world just opens up right in front of me. And it's totally. just a matter of just taking that time to, to be with yourself. And then those moments. So I appreciate totally. you sharing all those resources. Hey, you bet. Of course. Fan- fantastic. So as I mentioned to you before, before we hit record here, I was going to try to dig out one more nugget of wisdom. You've shared so much so far today. Mm. It's been Fantastic. This is going to be a fantastic episode, folks. If uh, you'll want to replay this one a few times and uh, really kind of grasp the ideas that we're sharing here with you. And when you do that, you can really begin to get once we've said or like we've said in the driver's seat of your own life and start crafting and creating this life that you desire versus one on autopilot, which is mm-hmm. my hope for you. And it sounds like it's Collins as well. Yeah, but I would bet. just be curious to try to dig one more nugget of wisdom out of you. Is there anything based on either the conversation we've mm-hmm. already had today or anything um, uh, from your experience that would definitely, you know, help people out there move the needle a little bit forward uh, for themselves? I think the one thing I would leave people with is if you are suffering today, right. Or challenged and um, remember that it does not have to be like this. That's it. Um, so often we, we, so often we, we get so deep into our storytelling and our narratives and we get so stuck with our coping mechanisms from medication to alcohol to, you know, you know, the list. Um, we think there's no way out. So if I can leave your audience with this one idea that it does not have to be like this, and if you can believe that and embrace that and start to see a glimmer of light, you can get yourself out of where you are today. Which is what we hope for, for you listening. That's what I'm actively trying to do in my own personal life. And uh, obviously that's what we want for humanity, right? That's yeah, the, that's the whole bet. goal at the end of the day. So Colin, you obviously have shared so much information, so much wisdom. You obviously, you're coaching folks. Uh, what are the best places for people to connect with you, learn more about you, learn more about the pillars that we've discussed today? Um, yeah, where are the best places for all that? I guess the best place is just calling Kingsville.com, you know, give me a call. Um, I I'm le- I'm kind of less on social media these days. I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit more on X, which is probably wrong, but, but um, uh, I'm on Instagram and, and uh, easily findable on LinkedIn and all the usual suspects. So wherever's easiest for you, I don't, I don't make it difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm out there. <laughs> so just, yeah, whatever channel and- you prefer. And as far as the enough already, is that a website to go to to learn more about that? You know, I, I have, I'm just getting it going, but yeah, enough already movement is up and running. I'm, I'm not sure where that's going to end up, but uh, hopefully it'll, it'll end up in uh, us all creating a better world for, uh, for us and for tomorrow. So yeah, I wouldn't go there quite yet. Maybe give it a month till I <laughs> ironed out some of the figured it out a little bit, but callingkingsmill.com is the, probably the best place to go. Fantastic. And we'll definitely leave a link in the show notes uh, for that. And obviously we'll do uh, the same thing for his social media handles and that type of thing as well. So you can get in contact with Colin. Thanks, so Randy. Colin, yeah, thank you. I just wanted to express a ton of gratitude to you for taking the time out of your busy day uh, to share your wisdom, share your thoughts with the listeners here of the Rich Mind Podcast. It really means a lot to me. And uh, maybe we'll get you back on sometime in the future. We'll go a little I'd, bit deeper into more of these pillars. I would love to come back on anytime. I've actually started doing that with a couple of podcasts. So uh, we do want to, we do want a season. So uh, yeah, happy to come back anytime you want. I will make a note of that. We might uh, actually have to try to get something scheduled. That'd be a lot of fun. So right. folks go out there and work towards getting in the driver's seat of your own life. Uh, you'll hear in my story. Uh, and it sounds like even in Collins as well. You know, you, we both have had kind of wake up calls in our own lives, realizing that, the truth that we thought was accurate, the checking the boxes, the going through the motions, the living on autopilot is mm-hmm. not necessarily the, the best way to live your own life, to go out there and succeed in ways that maybe not from a monetary or financial standpoint, but just from a, an emotional standpoint, from relationships, from 
all of the things that are at the end of the day, it's the most important piece. Uh, yeah. That's been my experience uh, for myself. That was my experience when uh, losing my father, unfortunately, at an early age and realizing that it was the, the relationships that he could have and probably should have worked on a little bit harder and a little bit more, but didn't because he was out there trying to accomplish, check mm -hmm. off boxes, do yeah. the things, get the stuff. Yeah. And that's what I don't, I don't want that for myself. And I don't want that for you moving forward. So hopefully you found this message valuable. Go out there and share this with your family and friends. Uh, Colin and I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, if any of the resources that we've mentioned here on the podcast resonated with you as well, I would recommend you go out there and find those as well. So go out there, focus on being great. Have a fantastic day. I'm looking forward to bringing back the next guest in the very near future. Look forward to it. And Take we'll care. talk to you very soon. Until Bye -bye. then. Take care. Bye now.